Okay, this is chapter 9, and this is on regression and correlation. And section 9.1 is on correlation, and we deal with this thing, the correlation coefficient, which is an R value. Uh, because the formula for R, the correlation coefficient R, is always somewhere between negative 1 and 1. It will never be lower than negative 1, and it will never be higher than positive 1. Now, correlation is checking to see how well something fits a either straight line or curve and in this class we only do a straight line and so this example here this is number of hours of training on a flight simulator and here are the number of mistakes okay and you can see that as the number of hours increase the number of mistakes decrease see Here's a person, these are different people here, each dot represents a data point. Here's somebody with only one hour of training, they did a flight simulator, they made 60 mistakes. Here's uh, three people with um, two hours of training, and they made about 58 mistakes, maybe 55, and maybe 48 mistakes. And you can see that the general trend here, the trend line, is that as the number of hours of training increase, here's clear up here to 20 hours of training, they only made a couple mistakes. Okay, now we actually want a pilot that makes no mistakes, and we could maybe get this equation of this line, this line of best fit, and find out how many hours are required until a pilot makes no mistakes. But right now, what we're talking about is just correlation, and if there is a line that best fits the data, that's called your line of best fit, or regression line, or least squares line, all that refers to the same line, the line that comes closest to all the data points, it minimizes the error. The error is the distance from the data point to the line, and there is a line that best fits all that data. And uh, let's say this is that line. Well, if that's the line, the equation of the line is y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope, and the slope of this line would be negative since it's going downhill from left to right. That means your correlation coefficient, your r, would be negative. And since it's uh, a good correlation here, the line is fitting your data points rather well, and we'll have a good way of uh, determining that. It, uh, well, actually, the good way of determining that is your correlation coefficient. This correlation coefficient would be very close to negative 1, because a correlation coefficient of negative 1 means, or close to negative 1, means that the uh, trend is going downward, and that the uh, line of best fit comes close to your data points. Okay, so this R value would be close to negative 1 there probably would be a strong negative correlation. Now, on this, SAT scores and your college GPA, you would figure the higher your SAT score, the higher your college GPA. Now, not everybody follows the trend line. Here's somebody with a low uh, SAT score and a high GPA, and you could have people over here with maybe high SAT scores and low GPA, but the general trend would probably be a positive trend, and on this problem, your correlation coefficient would be positive for sure since it's going uphill, and it would be close to 1, and you'd have a strong positive relationship. Now, how close to 1 does it need to be, or how close to negative 1 does it need to be on the last example? Well, that depends on your uh, sample size is a, is a lot of it, and uh, the variability in your data points also matters, but... Uh, it's it, it's a it's generally you can see this right here that it's a strong positive correlation and and the how close it is again matters with your variability and sample size and if it's close enough to one then we go we will be able to say that there's a significantly strong or a significant positive correlation between the two variables okay and of course you can have data that just as looks like a shotgun blast where the data is all over the place, the uh, computer using Excel will still find that line of best fit. It may go slightly uphill or slightly downhill or maybe a lot downhill, but still the data points aren't close to the line, so this R value is going to be close to zero. It may be slightly positive or slightly negative, but uh, not a good correlation between height and IQ. Okay, and also just to let you know, that correlation doesn't imply causality. Just because there's a correlation between two things doesn't mean that the one thing causes the other. And here's a good example of that, and we'll actually run the data for this problem. It says, use the data below to determine if there is a correlation between children's shoe size and the reading ability. Assume the shoe size and reading ability are normally distributed, and we need that to be true so we can run this test. Well, you may say shoe size and reading ability, your shoe size doesn't affect your reading, that's true. We're not checking to see if it affects your reading. We're just checking to see if there's a correlation between the two, not causality. So uh, what happens is, what? 
uh, children somewhere between the ages of 1 and 12, and here's their different shoe sizes, and here's their reading ability, and you may think there's no correlation here, but there is because what happens is that as children get older, their shoe sizes get bigger, and at the same time as they get older, the reading improves. So people, children with larger shoe sizes are generally older and have better reading ability. So it's not that their shoe size affects or causes their reading ability to improve. It's that their shoe size, there's a correlation between these two variables. There's a hidden variable here. That's how old the, the, uh, the child is. And that's really the thing that's affecting the reading ability and how old they are and how much time they spent reading and learning how to read. But uh, there's a correlation between these two variables. And what we can do is go to the uh, data sheet and let's go ahead and do that. And on the data sheet, uh, last sheet on an Excel sheet, you'll find uh, shoe size and reading ability. And we can copy this data and take it to our um, uh, regression and correlation sheet. So the sheet that we want to go to is called Reg and Core for regression and correlation. And right here, there's a place that you can uh, pay special your data in as values. And you get that data in. And once you get that data in, on the right-hand side, it graphs the model. And uh, you can see the data uh, fits that line, or the line fits the data really well. It actually gives you the equation of that line right here. Here's your equation of the line. Here's your uh, slope. And here's your y-intercept. And... Um, over here, we can test to see if there's any correlation. I think it just said test to see if there's any correlation. If it said test for a positive correlation, we do a right tail test. If it says check for a negative correlation, we do a left tail test. But it just said check to see if there's any correlation between children's shoe size and the reading ability. And we get this uh, p-value right here, which is in scientific notation. That e to the negative 5 means move your decimal point 5 place to the left. So your p-value is actually 0. 0.00003, very small. We reject the null hypothesis that it equals 0. So we actually know that there's a correlation between shoe size and reading ability. Uh, now, is it positive correlation or negative correlation? Well, just looking at this line, we can see that the line's going uphill. So it's a significant positive correlation is how I would say this. Now, your correlation coefficient was 0.97. That's huge. So uh, definitely by seeing this too, we know that it's, it's a, a positive correlation. And since we rejected the null hypothesis, we know it's a significant positive correlation. The most significant alpha level would be 0 0.0001 because that's even smaller than this uh, uh, p-value right here. Uh, there's a place to put in your alpha level right here. And if I put in point one, two, three, four. Well, I see we go to three zeros and a one. You'll still get a reject the null hypothesis on this. And so at the point four, point zero, 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 one alpha level, I was able to show that there was a significant positive correlation between children's shoe size and their reading ability. Okay, the second example is testing to see if there's a negative correlation between the number of absences and a person grade. So there are uh, so many people here sampled, and here's the number of absences, and here's their grade. We're checking to see if there's a negative correlation, so we'll be doing a left tail test. I went ahead and uh, got the data from the data sheet and pasted it into the red core sheet, and we can see that there's a negative trend line right here. We see that the slope is negative, and is it significant or not? Well. If I look down here, I can see that the p-value is very, very small, 0 0.00009.59. So we reject this clear down to the 0 0.001 alpha uh, level. And we would be able to say at the 0 0.001 alpha level that there is a significant negative correlation between number of absences and grade. So the more you miss, the more... Uh, uh, the more that you miss, the lower your grade is. And uh, we can see here's the slope and all the, uh, all the information is given along here. So that will do it with that, uh, that section.